Welcome to the Salt Strong Podcast, disrupting fishing entertainment as you know it. Prepare to laugh. Prepare to get to know fishing legends in a whole new and unfiltered way. And on occasion, you might even learn a thing or two about fishing. Here's your host, Joe Simons, like diamonds. You can't outgive God. And I've got proof, lots of proof. Hey, everybody, Joe Simons, Lake Diamonds, back again, Salt Strong Unchurched. If you hear a little bit of echo, that's because I'm in our brand new home. We're still unboxing and all over the place with three young kids and uh, a lot of stuff being moved and an older house that we uh, that we got. And, uh, and I was sitting here reflecting on how far we've come in just really five, six years. You know, when Luke and I started Salt Strong, I mean, we went completely... You know, debt free. So we we sold everything, sold a little business, and um, and it paid off. Like you know, my wife had six figures of student loans from a uh, medical school, and uh, literally just paid down everything. Went completely one hundred percent debt free. No debt on cars, no credit cards, nothing. And it felt great. Uh, that also meant we we kind of had nothing left after Luke and I invested. You know, quite a bit of money. Uh, into Salt Strong to get that going. And, uh, you know, we ended up going, gosh, it was 18 months before we we really saw any decent amount of money coming in. In those first 18 months, you know, we, we were basically bleeding money. Uh, money was going out a whole lot faster than it was coming in. And then uh, I had a friend named Darren, who I was chatting with, is uh, we were continuing to to grow salt strong and it still wasn't where we wanted to be. We were now at least paying ourselves, but quite frankly, there was still more money going out than there was coming. I mean, it was not a profitable company. We were paying ourselves a, a teacher's salary just to, you know, help pay some bills, but there was a whole lot more going out than, than was going in. And, you know, my wife, she had, you know, had to make a massive sacrifice and had quit uh, the, the doctor's office she was working at and, and had to start over fresh, which is not fun if anyone is a, uh, you know, had to had to do that in the medical field. It's always just tough being the the low person on the totem pole and having to you know start from the the ground up. And uh, she couldn't even get full time employment, so she was part time. So we had no health insurance. Still, still don't as I'm recording this. Obviously, we we have it privately, but it costs a lot of money. Um, you know, don't have even of us have any salaries. It was just kind of eat what you kill, go as hard as you can, and and hope and pray that things would work out. And back to my friend Darren. I was chatting with him about just some of the financial struggles, honestly. We were, you know, just a few years ago in a, in a tight spot. I mean, we had basically gone down to like almost zero. I mean, literally all savings, all checking, nothing. Uh, we had a little bit of an old like retirement account. But besides that, we had no home. Like we literally had no assets, no equity, except what we had in Salt Strong and our, you know, personal belongings. And that wasn't that long ago. And I had this conversation with Buddy Darren. I'm telling him about it. I'm like, man, I'm just struggling here because I've, you know, I've always had so many amazing things happen to me. I feel like I just keep getting blessed every time that that I, I tithe or just give to charities, whatever it is. And and I kind of stopped doing it because we were just bleeding money, right? Um, and and I it, it's this a kind of a, I mean a lot of people who who are biblical scholars are not going to say it's a gray area, but for a lot of Americans. Who, who just struggle with day-to-day stuff and, and paying bills, it's a great area, meaning, hey, if I'm literally losing money, you know, do I give 10% of what I've lost or do I give 10% of what I, I've made? And even though I know and I was raised to know the answer is 10% of what you're making, you know, it's, it's tough. It's really tough. I mean, it's something that I've struggled with over and over again when I've had bad years in, in sales and uh, in bad years as an entrepreneur. It's, it's really tough to give 10%, you know, of, of your income or your overall revenue that you're generating as a company or a small business owner, when you're not saving any yourself, I mean, it's literally all going out. And then some, uh, when sometimes you're even negative or even can't pay yourself like Luke and I did for 18 months. And my buddy Darren said something uh, along the lines of, okay, you know, what I found in my life is you can't outgive God. And, and I know that's been said a few times, and it's, I believe it's in the book Malachi, where it's it's mentioned there uh, that that God basically challenges you to test Him when it comes to to giving, and uh, and and basically, and and uh, uh, depending on what 
what what Bible you're reading. It essentially says you you can't outgive me, you can't outgive God. And and he said that, and I was like, yeah, but <laughs> you know, but you know, like man, we're literally bleeding money right now. I can't I I can't even look my wife in the eyes and tell her that you know we she can't go buy any new clothes or anything for the entire year. We're literally just scrounging, getting by. And yet we're going to give, you know, 500 bucks, a thousand bucks, whatever it is, you know, to, to our church or, or to a charity. And he said, Joe, whatever you do, don't stop giving. And, and it hit me. And I was like, man, um, and I've been praying a lot for just the right message. And it came from my buddy, Darren, at just the right time where he said, you cannot give God. And he said, Joe, whatever you do, don't stop giving. It will come back. And so we did. We it was a really, really tough decision. It was a really tough decision with my wife, and uh, and and we had honestly quite a few fights about it. Um, you know, and and part of it too is I had been you know giving and tithing way before we got married, and and she never really got to see some of the blessings that happened to me why I was doing it, and and as I kept making more money, I kept giving more, and and, and was very very blessed. And then we stopped for a while, especially. Uh, or didn't stop. We just way slow down and, and gave a much smaller proportion of what we probably should be doing, just being completely candid. And, um, and, and I felt like we weren't blessed as much. So we said, you know what? We are going to keep giving regardless if we're not even saving money ourselves. We are going to give first. And, uh, and we even set up an account with the National Christian Foundation where it just takes it out of our, our bank or our, you know your payroll, whatever you're on, right off the bat before anything happened. So it's just kind of gone. And, uh, and then we started, you know, paying ourselves. So we wanted to make sure that we were saving and putting away some money for kids and, 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 and a home because we're renting now at this point, we've been renting for really since we got married, actually, my wife and I have never bought a house together. We've been married 11 years. So we've been renting this entire time. And, uh, and, and so we had a lot of goals of things that we want to do. And so kind of fast forward to today, we've continued to scale up the giving and, um, and, and kind of spread it out a lot of different places. I'm never going to say here's where you have to give, or you have to give to, you know, certain churches or foundations. A lot of that's just going to come down to to personal, um, you know, not, not necessarily personal beliefs, but just things that, that fulfill you. And you think that, you know, you can have your money serving a, a bigger impact. And um, we continue to kept kind of moving the needle up on that. And and this was before the money started coming in, if you will, in, in terms of Salt Strong doing better, my wife's practice, getting uh, getting better, and she's getting more time uh, there at the at the office where she's working at the, at the clinic. And, and all of a sudden, we kind of gave a little bit more. And then all of a sudden, it, you know, blessings. And I'm not talking about just money. I just everything. Uh, the family life was going better. If you guys heard my podcast a few weeks ago about, you know, writing you know, essentially a, a little love letter, something I love or appreciate about my wife every single day for a year. I mean, all these little things just started coming into my life. And that was, that to me, that's priceless, right? There's, there's no money. There's not a dollar amount you could put on that for, for myself or my wife. And yet that was just all these ideas and these random things just started coming into our life that were just awesome. Uh, and, and we were making more money, which was also awesome because that, that is nice. It's n- it's nice to, to be a little bit more financially secure versus absolutely stressed out about money. I've been, I've been in both seats. And I'll be honest with you, it's it's a little bit better to have a lot of a, a lot of extra padding there versus you know going month to month or going negative for uh, for many months. It's not it's really not that fun. Um, but all that being said, we were continually blessed the more that we gave and the more we got back. And once again, this was not just a financial thing where I give a thousand and I get $10,000 back. I, I think if you do it for that purpose, then it's probably not going to work. Uh, I don't think God is trying to challenge you in that to say, hey, give me a thousand and I'll give you 10,000 back. Uh, it, it's not an ATM machine. It's not a money tree. It, it's something you have to do at the bottom of your heart and uh, and just know and, and trust that that God will protect you. And I've seen it over and over again. So this most recent one that really spurred this conversation. So as we're moving, I'm going back and forth to these, um, you know, the new house versus the old house. And, you know, a lot of of time on the, on the road and in between moves. And I'm just like thinking through and I was like, oh man, I gotta, I gotta film my unchurched. You know, I don't even know where the microphone's packed, but I gotta film the next unchurched. 
And I was just kind of thinking about things that happened and, and it hit me because I've got this beautiful home, even though it, it needs a lot of work. It was one that was not in a bidding war here in the state of Florida, uh, just because it really needed a ton of work. It was built in 1970, and uh, but it's on the lake. It's been the dream to have a house on the lake for my kids that we can go create some really amazing memories here as a, as a family and do all the water skiing and stuff that I grew up doing and obviously catching a lot of, a lot of big bass off the, off the back porch. Um, but I was like, man, I'm, we're so blessed. I mean, just a few years ago, we're stressed out. We had no money and here we are, you know, with money to, you know, put a down, a nice down payment on a, on a house, even though we didn't even have the opportunity to sell anything because we were renting. So it, it like, we probably picked one of the worst times in history to, to do it, but we made it happen. And, uh, and anyways, we was like, man, we're so blessed. And I was like, you know, I'm going to do a podcast about, about giving and the fact that, I don't think it's possible to outgive God. And so as I'm driving, I, I, I put a kind of a mental note to myself. And then um, I was like, you know what? I haven't like done anything above and beyond just their normal kind of, you know, tithing that we do every month. Um, and, and, you know, we use both personal and with salt strong we give is, uh, as well. So two different ways to give. Um, and I was like, you know what, uh, this, this guy, Shane, Shane Wilson, huge kudos, to this guy, he, he is dedicated a big chunk of his life, uh, for a organization called Fishing's Future, where they take all kinds of underprivileged kids, single moms, single dads out fishing, just go create memories. I mean, his whole mission in life is to help people create memories through fishing, which ties in very well with ours. And they do these fishing camps all over the country now. Uh, pretty awesome. I think he even's got a couple abroad. And I was like, man, Shane, Shane's one of our incident members. He talks this up all the time. And I was like, I'm, I'm just going to give him some money. So I finally get to my stop at the, at the new, at the new house. And I take a little note, shoot myself an email. I get back to the, uh, the other house where I have my little notepads and stuff still not packed. And I wrote down of uh, the, the notes of what I wanted to talk about. Basically this podcast here, I started writing in a couple notes, wrote down the title, you know, why or proof that you cannot give God. And then I put it down and no lie with, and, and I also wrote that I'm going to give Shane a uh, thousand bucks. So it was a thousand dollar donation uh, just you know, above and beyond what we normally give. So it's, it's a nice chunk of change. And uh, I wrote it down, didn't do anything. And then 15 minutes, no lie, 15 minutes. And this is now in the evening time. Uh, Carol in our office calls me out of the blue. Normally, Carol doesn't call me at like 7.30 at night unless something's wrong. And I was like, oh boy, what's what's happening? And uh, Carol's like, hey, like you won't believe this, but TFO just called uh, here in the evening and they have like an emergency where they got they have rods in Florida. They can't take them back to Texas. It's like 75 or 80 of, of, of our top selling rods that we cannot get in stock. Like they sell out well, usually within hours. And they just did, by the way. And I mean, that, that was crazy. Like, I was like, wow. And once again, I, I'm not going to say you put a thousand in and all of a sudden you get, you know, 85 fishing rods all at a hundred dollars a piece, but it was absolutely like mind numbing, like wh how that happened. Just the fact of me writing down. And so I think it was God challenged me like, all right, prove it. Try to, try to out give me, try to, try to bless more people and, and, uh, and, and see what happens. And so I just wanted to share that with you. It was so cool. It was, uh, it, it was it was just so cool to see all that happen so quick, and now I'm able to bless Shane and all the people he's able to bless, and it's just like this in this almost never ending trail of of good things that are happening, and and now I, I've seen the pictures of what Shane and his group are doing, and now all these people are getting blessed all because of I made one commitment to do a little bit extra, and then I get rewarded. I mean TFO out of the blue, obviously we start to pay for the rods, but there's still nice margin in these rods. And I mean, you know, our company gave a thousand and just made many thousands. It was really, really, really wild. And uh, just another, just another reminder that you can't out give God. So I'd love to hear your stories. I've, um, I've talked about this, you know, personally with some friends, even some fishing captains that I want to get on the show and have them tell their stories. Some of them are pretty big names that are Christians. You might not know it and have some really amazing stories about tithing and, uh, and giving. Uh, one in particular, I won't mention his name and I'll have permission, but it is one of the coolest stories ever about tithing and kind of the magic that, uh, that, that really saved their life, marriage, kind of transformed everything all because they were super bold and, and gave really big in a time they probably 
probably couldn't really afford to financially, but they they said, you know, we're going to trust God and we're just going to do this and we're going to bless bless some other people big time and and uh, I mean just got flooded with favor. So uh, I'm going to see if I can get a couple of these uh, these guests on and have them tell their story. That'd be really cool. But I'd love to hear your story. Uh, either you know, shoot me an email is the most secure way where obviously it's confidential and won't get out there. If it's something you can post on the blog for everyone to see, I'd love that too. It's saltstrong.com forward slash unchurched. Otherwise, my email, joe, J-O-E, at saltstrong.com. Sorry, I'm running out of breath here. I'm walking around my house trying to get away from the kids so they don't all try to hijack my podcast. Uh, you know, school is out, summertime, and uh, they're all here enjoying this uh, this new house. And I'll give you some more updates on that as we, you know, kind of get settled in and fix up all the 1970s stuff and get down some of this pink wallpaper I'm staring at. Uh, never a dull moment, but we're really, really blessed. And uh, once again, I, I thank God. I thank uh, all you guys for all the amazing support from uh, Salt Strong. It really is. Uh, it's really been awesome. And uh, I'm uh, looking forward to hearing from you. Shoot me a message, Joe, at saltstrong.com. Talk to you on the next episode. Cause this year, it's in my soul, it was pain.